James McGill Buchanan Jr. Get a good look at this guy. This photo was taken when he was 90 years old. Sharp as a tack. There's a reason you haven't heard about this guy. They've kept him under wraps. The reason I want you to take a good look at him is because he's probably the most destructive force in the United States and in the world that you've ever met. Compare him to anyone else in history and you might find that they all come up short in the evil department. Meet the economist behind the 1% stealth takeover of America by Lynn Paramore. Nobel laureate James Buchanan is the intellectual linchpin of the Koch-funded attack on democratic institutions, argues Duke historian Nancy McLean. Ask people to name the key minds that have shaped America's burst of radical right-wing attacks on working conditions, consumer rights, and public services, and they will typically mention figures like free market champion Milton Friedman, libertarian guru Ayn Rand, and laissez-faire economists Friedrich Hayek and Ludwig von Mies. James McGill Buchanan is a name you will rarely hear unless you've taken several classes in economics, and if the Tennessee-born Nobel laureate were alive today, it would suit him just fine that most well-informed journalists, liberal politicians, and even many economic students have little understanding of his work. The reason? Duke historian Nancy McLean contends that his philosophy is so stark that even young libertarian acolytes are only introduced to it after they have accepted the relatively sunny perspective of Ayn Rand. Yes, you read that correctly. If Americans really knew what Buchanan thought and promoted and how destructively his vision is manifesting under their noses, it would dawn on them how close the country is to a transformation most would not even want to imagine, much less accept. That is a dangerous blind spot, McLean argues in a meticulously researched book, Democracy in Chains, a finalist for the National Book Award in nonfiction. While Americans grapple with Donald Trump's chaotic presidency, we may be missing the key to changes that are taking place far beyond the level of mere politics. Once these changes are locked into place, there may be no going back. An unlocked door in Virginia. McLean's book reads like an intellectual detective story. In 2010, she moved to North Carolina, where a Tea Party-dominated Republican Party got control of both houses of the state legislature and began pushing through a radical program to suppress voter rights, decimate public services, and slash taxes on the wealthy that shocked a state long a beacon of Southern moderation. Up to this point, the figure of James Buchanan flickered in her peripheral vision, but as she began to study his work closely, the events in North Carolina and also Wisconsin, where Governor Scott Walker was leading assaults on collective bargaining rights, shifted her focus. Could it be that this relatively obscure economist's distinctive thought was being put forcefully into action in real time? McLean could not gain access to Buchanan's papers to test her hypothesis until after his death in January 2013. That year, just as the government was being shut down by Ted Cruz and company, she traveled to George Mason University in Virginia, where the Economist's papers lay willy-nilly across the offices of a building now abandoned by the Koch-funded faculty to a new, fancier center in Arlington. McLean was stunned. The archive of the man who had sought to stay under the radar had been left totally unsorted and unguarded. The historian plunged in and she read through boxes and drawers full of papers that included personal correspondence between Buchanan and billionaire industrialist Charles Koch. That's when she had an amazing realization. Here was the intellectual linchpin of a stealth revolution currently in progress. And make no mistake, dear listeners and viewers, this revolution is still in progress. This revolution dwarfs any anti-revolution that we may be trying to cook up. A theory of property supremacy. She uses the word supremacy here on purpose. It's white supremacy, it really is. Buchanan, a 1940 graduate of Middle Tennessee State University who later attended the University of Chicago for graduate study, started out as a conventional public finance economist, but he grew frustrated by the way in which economic theorists ignored the political process. Buchanan began working on a description of power that started out as a critique of how institutions functioned in the relatively liberal 1950s and 60s, 
a time when economist John Maynard Keynes' ideas about the need for government intervention in markets to protect people from flaws so clearly demonstrated in the Great Depression held sway. Buchanan, McLean notes, was incensed at what he saw as a move towards socialism and deeply suspicious of any form of state action that channels resources to the public. Why should the increasingly powerful federal government be able to force the wealthy to pay for goods and programs that served ordinary citizens and the poor? In thinking about how people make political decisions and choices, Buchanan concluded that you could only understand them as individuals seeking personal advantage. In an interview cited by McLean, The Economist observed that in the 1950s, Americans commonly assumed that elected officials wanted to act in the public interest. Buchanan vehemently disagreed. That was a belief he wanted, as he put it, to tear down. His ideas developed into a theory that came to be known as public choice. And now, dear viewers and listeners, you're going to figure out where Maggie Thatcher and Captain Ronnie Reagan got their ideas. To go on to the next clip, click the link above my rounded pate. <laughs>